Hello guys, so I want you to imagine a story for me. Imagine that uh, a boxer is walking along a beach and they discover a box and on the box is written the words the best boxing training device ever and they take the device home to their gym and they open it up and there's this kind of weird assortment of bits and pieces a bit like an exercise machine there's bits that look like it might be a punch bag there's bits that look like it might be a speed ball there's bits that look like it might be for exercising their their shoulder muscles and their stomach so um there's no instructions they they put this device together the best they can and it's by no means clear how they put this device together and uh they do the best they can with this device try and work out what it does and they they exercise with it and they exercise with it and they get their friends exercising with it and um never really knowing what the device does and um they keep keep with it because after all it's been told on on the box that it's the best training device ever for boxing and they keep on working with it because they're certain it's going to make their boxing really really effective and uh, and they get a really big shoulder on one side and they develop a fast jab on the other side and and uh, you know they have a uh, one strong calf and and they keep training at it they keep training at it and and now because they've been training at it for for years and years they they start to teach other people how to use it as they've understood it and all of these other people train with this this weird device that that they don't really understand and um, n now, you know, 20, 30 years down the line, they're experts and the people they've taught have taught other people and um, they reinterpreted things because some of what they were taught didn't quite match the way that this device worked. And they, they all practice and, and the different experts in inverted commas each add their own skew on how to use this device. And now a hundred years down the line, there's, there's entire generations of people have been using this device. None of them really quite knowing what it was originally invented for because the instructions were never with it. And, and, uh, all of these people who've got these decades and decades invested in how to how to use this device and teaching other people how to use this device and at the end of the day none of them knows what the device how it was supposed to work they, they, they're all just trying to work it out for themselves and um, to me that is an, an analogy for Kata we we have this thing which we are told is this this fantastic teaching tool which was passed on by people quite frankly who knew less about combat than than we do nowadays and um we have no idea what lessons they were trying to pass on so different people try to extract meaning from it some people say well you know the bunkai is useless because there are better ways to fight now and so what we need to get from it is mastery. Other people say, well, mastery is not important because there are other ways to get mastery. What we need to get from it is principles of movement. Um, and then other people look at it and say, no, 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 principles of movement aren't important. There's specific techniques going on here. And everybody's giving it their own slant. And nobody really knows what the original kata was meant to do. If it was meant to be, you know, I've, I've heard this thing with, with kata where it's supposed to be it's meant to have layers to it, so so there's the the uh, I think it's the omoto the ob uh, uh, omote, the the obvious um, meaning to it. You know uh, something might you know if it looks like a punch, it is a punch, and then there's a deeper level where a punch might actually be a block or a, or a, um or a throw or something like that. And then there are other other deeper meanings that, that can be uh, interpolated that, that don't match the movements, but but uh, kind of more an expansion of the principles involved. And then there are just general principles of movement and and core and all of that kind of stuff and i hear so much bs spoken about exactly what kata uh contains and and i think that we really just need to recognize that kata is a largely is is a a tool which has passed its sell by date you know that there, there was a time when kata was probably the only way to pass on and encapsulate a fighting system or a sequence of self-defense moves in an era before tv dvd uh, even when when it was dangerous to keep records but nowadays we we have access to a wealth of information and um i i certainly see some value in uh encapsulating possibly possibly in, in encapsulating the self-defense moves of your style in a way that can be practiced by a person on their own just to keep it fresh and to work on muscle memory um 
So if your kata is contemporary, if your kata represents principles that you actually believe in rather than rather than trying to fit your beliefs to the kata, um, I, I see that there's some, some value to that. Um, for example, in my style, Shinkiru, um, we have created some kata, some that I'm really behind and some that are not so. And and um, But the, the first one is just simple escapes from wrist grabs and uh, lapel grabs. And we invented that kata. It, it, so just a way for people to practice things that we think are important and and that in a sense is what kata should be and and um even in an age when there's internet um and dvd and youtube and all of that stuff it's nice sometimes just to have a way whereby you go through a sequence of moves that, that develop that muscle memory but i think by and large uh, you know if you look at the the more obscure katas um you know um say kenku show or unsu or something like that you know the higher stuff um even basai dai uh most of that kata is is fairly obscure and uh, most of the meaning of that kata is fairly obscure and, and even when the style that you practice has a really strong meaning for each each move or each sequence you have to ask yourself uh, 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 is, is that really the solution that you would adopt for that situation um, it, it seems to me that a, a, a lot of the um, a lot of the old self-defense was really not all that practical even when it was when it was invented. I mean, you only have to look at something like um, um, Duncan Master or Monkey Style to see that entire styles can be made up out of a preposterous um, a, a preposterous uh, idea. Uh, so, you know, just because it was old doesn't mean it was a great thing. So I, I really do think it's time to move beyond kata or at least to move beyond traditional kata and, and uh, if, if we're going to retain them as a as a learning methodology that we, we need to reinvent kata if we're going to use them at all. Anyway, good to speak to you. Take care. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please take the time to rate and comment and it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe. Thank you.